continue with the property of algebraic. We move from algebraic elements over a field to algebraic extensions over a field. This will lead to the notion of algebraic closure. To begin, we start with f a subfield of k. We say that alpha and k is algebraic over f. If there exists a non-zero polynomial g with coefficients in f, such that g on alpha is zero. We've seen that this condition is equivalent to the degree of the subfield generated by f and alpha over f being finite. With this, we have the definition. K is called an algebraic extension of f. Every element of K is algebraic over f. To get a feel for algebraic extensions, okay, let's work through some examples. First, okay, finite extensions. If I take any finite extension over f, then that's an algebraic extension of f. For instance, okay, let's call our finite extension k. If I take any alpha in k, then the subfield generated by f and alpha, okay, its degree over f is less than or equal to the degree of k over f, and that's finite. So every alpha is algebraic over f, and the extension is also algebraic over f. Subcase of this, if I take alpha algebraic over f, Okay, we take k equal to f adjoint alpha, then that's an algebraic extension of f. Likewise, if I take beta in f adjoint alpha, then k prime equal to f adjoint beta is also an algebraic extension of f. Okay, finally, going with this idea, if I take a finite number of algebraic elements over f, say alpha one through alpha m, we take f adjoint alpha one through alpha m, that's an algebraic extension of f. Okay, we've seen last time, if we take any element here, its degree is going to be less than the product of the degrees of the alphas. To be more specific, let's consider finite fields. Finite field is an algebraic extension over any of its subfields. For instance, let's take f sub q, finite field with q elements, then q is a power of a prime, say p to the n with p prime and a positive integer. Any subfield is going to be in the form f sub q prime, with q prime equal to p of the m, m divides n. With that, the degree of f sub q over f sub q prime is equal to n divided by m, so that shows algebraic as an extension. Note we could show this directly for each element. So if I take any element in f sub q, we know a group of units in here form a cyclic group. So every element in f sub q is a root of x to the q minus x. This polynomial has its coefficients in f sub q prime. Okay, the coefficients are 1 and minus 1. Now, one thing to note, k is an algebraic extension of f. That does not mean that k is a finite extension of f. For instance, okay, working off of this example, I could take z mod 2. That sits inside of the finite field with 16 elements. Okay, that sits inside the finite field with 256 elements, and so on. Okay, so here the pattern that I'm using is finite field with 2 to the 2 to the n elements. Now, if I take the union of all these using the inclusion, that's going to give me a field with infinitely many elements. Okay, every element lives in some finite field, so they're all algebraic over z mod 2. So this is going to be an algebraic extension, but its degree over z mod 2 is infinite. Okay, an example that's a little bit more straightforward. We have the complex numbers are an algebraic extension of the reals. So in this case, the degree of the complexes over the reals is 2. So algebraic extension. To see directly that every element is algebraic, Okay, let's take a complex number alpha. Then this is going to be a root of the polynomial x minus alpha, x minus complex conjugate of alpha. Okay, when we work that out, coefficients are going to be, okay, we have minus 2 real of alpha. Okay, that's real. And then the modulus squared of alpha is also real. So this is a polynomial in the reals. Now let's note, okay, we have c is algebraic over the reals. Because we have pi transcendental in C, the complex numbers, 
Complex numbers are not algebraic over the rationals. Likewise, the reals are not algebraic over the rationals, but we do have the algebraic numbers, q bar, are an algebraic extension of the rationals. Okay, and again, in this case, we note, if we take the degree of q bar over q, this is gonna be infinite. For the last fact, we take q adjoint square root of two, I join a fourth root of two, that gives a degree two extension. I join an eighth root of two to that, we get another degree two extension, and so on. Now, each of these is a subfield of q bar. So if we take the union, we get another subfield of q bar. And this subfield is built out of an infinite tower of degree two extensions. So the degree of q bar must be infinite over the rationals. Now, useful fact, if we have k an algebraic extension of f, k prime, a subfield of k that contains f, and k prime is also an algebraic extension of f. This is straightforward. If we take any alpha in k prime, okay, it's already an element of k, so alpha is algebraic over f, which is what we need to show. This result has a very useful converse. So theorem, L is an algebraic extension of K, K is an algebraic extension of F, then we must have that L is also an algebraic extension of F. So this says if I have a field tower built out of, okay, stepwise algebraic extensions, then any span in that tower is also an algebraic extension. See this, let's pick any alpha in L, because L is an algebraic extension of K, Okay, alpha is algebraic over k. So there exists a polynomial of coefficients in k with alpha as a root. So let's write that out. Now, instead of working with k, I want to instead work with the elements okay, with coefficients in the polynomial. So say k0 through kn. Now, because k is an algebraic extension of f, we have a subfield of k given by f adjoin k0 through kn. And I want to work with this instead of k. Now we note from the polynomial, okay, alpha is also algebraic over this subfield. So we can set up field towers. Okay, I have f adjoin k0 through kn and alpha sitting over f adjoin k0 through kn. By alpha being algebraic, this is a finite extension. We also have, because k is algebraic over f, f adjoint k0 through kn is finite over f. So if we put these together, okay, this is going to be finite extension over f. Now we note alpha is an element of f adjoint k0 through kn alpha, so that means alpha is an algebraic element with respect to f, which is what we wanted to show. Here's a useful interpretation of the theorem. If k is an algebraic extension of f, and we want to show that alpha is algebraic over f, it's enough to show that alpha is algebraic over k. So we look for a polynomial with coefficients in k with alpha as a root. For example, if alpha is algebraic over f, then so are all nth roots of alpha. These elements are all roots of the polynomial x to the n minus alpha. This polynomial has its coefficients in f adjoin alpha. So these are all algebraic over f. With this, we have a method for constructing algebraic numbers. We've noted this before. I start with all rationals, and we repeatedly apply radicals and arithmetic operations. So we get elements that look like this. Now, we've also noted this process does not produce all algebraic numbers, though. For another example, recall We've showed that trig values on the rational multiples of pi are always algebraic numbers. There's a cheat in our proof, though. We use Euler's formula, so we're using complex numbers to show that these real numbers are algebraic over the rationals. If we insist on only using real numbers, we can appeal to the methods of our theorem. For instance, let's show that sine of one degree is an algebraic number. We proceed in several steps. First step, sine of a is an algebraic number, if and only if cosine of a is an algebraic number. See this, 
take cosine squared plus sine squared equal to one, and I isolate one of cosine or sine. So if I assume that cosine of a is an algebraic number, the algebraic numbers are a field. So one minus cosine of a squared is also an algebraic number. If we take the square root by our result we've just shown, that's also an algebraic number. So sine of a will also be algebraic. Okay, and then that works in the other direction. Next step, if sine of a is an algebraic number, then so is sine of a over two. To see this, we apply to the double angle formula for sine. So you have sine of two b equals two sine b cosine b. I can write cosine b entirely in terms of sine. So as so. Now, I could rewrite this as a polynomial equation, 4y to the fourth minus 4y squared plus c equals zero. And here I have y equal to sine of b, c equal to sine of 2b squared. So if sine of 2b is algebraic, then sine of b satisfies a polynomial with coefficients in the algebraic numbers. That means that sine of b is also an algebraic number. So if sine of 2b is algebraic, so is sine of b. And that's what we wanted to show. Next step, if sine a is an algebraic number, and so is sine of a divided by three. We proceed as before. So we take sine of 3b, and we apply the angle sum formula for sine. Now when we work all this out, we see that sine of b is a root of the polynomial, 4y cubed minus 3y plus c, where c equals sine of 3b. So if sine of 3b is an algebraic number, then sine of b satisfies a polynomial with entries in the algebraic numbers. So sine of b is an algebraic number itself. That means if sine of an angle is algebraic, then so is sine of that angle divided by three, which is what we want to show. Next step, if sine of a is an algebraic number, then so is sine of a over five. Again, we proceed as before. So start with sine of five b. We do our trigonometry. And what we wind up with is sine of five b written as a polynomial in sine of b with rational entries. So that's gonna give our result as before. Now, show that sine of one degree is algebraic. Okay, I start with sine and cosine of 360 degrees. So zero and one. We apply our rules. So 360 I can write as two cubed times three squared times five. So I can reduce out all those primes to get down to one. So that shows sine of one degree is an algebraic number, as promised. Now note, if m is an integer, we can get cosine of m degrees and sine of m degrees algebraic from this. So here I would just use induction and our angle sum formulas for cosine and sine. We finish with the notion of algebraic closure. Definition, if k is no proper algebraic extensions, then k is called algebraically closed. Equivalently, the only irreducible polynomials over k are linear. For example, we have the complex numbers by the fundamental theorem of algebra, any non-constant polynomial over C factors linearly over C. So algebraically closed. Likewise, we have the algebraic numbers. We take any non-constant polynomial with coefficients in the algebraic numbers. All of its roots are algebraic numbers. So these factor linearly, so algebraically closed. On the other hand, we have the reals. If we take the polynomial x squared plus one over the reals, that's irreducible, but not linear. So the reals are not algebraically closed. For the fields that are not algebraically closed, we can always attach a field that is. It's definition, an algebraic closure of K is an algebraic extension of K that is algebraically closed. Algebraic closures always exist and are unique up to isomorphism. So we usually refer to the algebraic closure of K and denote it by K bar. Now the way we should think of this, okay, K bar is the largest algebraic extension of K. 
So for instance, if we take the reals, algebraic closure, okay, well, I can adjoin I to this to get the complex numbers, and then this is algebraically closed, so we can't go any further. Likewise, if I take the algebraic closure of Q adjoined square root of two, this contains the rationals, so its algebraic closure contains the algebraic numbers, but then we can't extend any further than that. So these are equal. Note if we adjoin any algebraic number, we take the algebraic closure, we're gonna get the algebraic numbers back. Nope, the recipe for constructing algebraic closure of K, same as that we do for the algebraic numbers. So I would take all polynomials with coefficients in K and adjoin all of the roots to K. Of course, we have to make sense of that by putting everything inside of some larger field.